Oh, to be eight years old again. Actually, I don't want to be eight years old again. I like the age I am. During the summer of 2023, we moved to a remote Scottish Hebridean island to be its only two residents, along with our two pet sheep and pair of cats. These remote islands seem to retain an old-fashioned rhythm and a charm which we find encouraging us to live a more frugal and simple life, the way man was perhaps more intended to. We have an ancient stone cottage to restore, veggies to grow, livestock to build up, fish to catch and smoke, a boat to buy, and much more. Step back in time with us at the Scottish Isle. Should we go and climb and have a look? Yeah. I don't fancy those uh, those ladders taking my weight going up there. Sweet thing. Lovely thing to build your children. I wonder how long that's been there. It's like a way marker, isn't it? Yeah. So we wouldn't have been able to see this before when we've been down there because of all the leaves. That's right. Cool yeah, what a cool thing. Well. Say again? Cool tree. Oh Perfect yeah, for... it's an amazing tree. Um, what do you think you're doing? Somebody said in the comments, do you have favourite sheep? Yeah. I don't. I do. There she is. Bree's getting a new heat lamp today. Oh yeah. I say probably... Bree because Crowdy tends just to lie there. Yeah, she doesn't really care. She gets covered in frost and she doesn't care. So, oh. in here we go. They're not eating this hay. There's a sheep nose hole in there. I, I, I've been monitoring this and they're not eating the hay, neither of them. And the only reason they're not eating the hay is because of the bags that it's in. Because when you take the hay from here and you put it in front of them, they're eating it. Well, I'll need to get a hay net then. We, I mean, that's harbour though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is... Uh, with these, we, we we usually have to change at least one a year because Bree being a big sheep, she is. She stands up, she whacks them, she knocks them. Usually what happens is she she breaks these. This, where the bulb goes in, these get snapped off and then they're completely unusable. So we have to get a new one. And that's exactly what has happened to this one under here. You can see how she snapped the screw off it, look, where she's hit it. Bree. Bree gets heat lamp. Heat. Good grief. Bree gets heat lamps because she's a French sheep. She's of Mediterranean descent, aren't you, Bree? So. 
We are going to become the number one YouTube channel for changing heat lamps in a sheet pen. In a, in a, in a very small space. <laughs> I'll be back momentarily. Intermission. <laughs> Can you stop with your humming and tell me when I've unplugged the right one? You know when you're filming a vlog? Yeah. Everything becomes twice as difficult. Now why? Because you've only got one hand. Except, no, you've got... Well, You've got two. Pa you've got like one pair of hands. You've usually got two pair of hands, but now that second pair of hands always seems to be holding a bloody camera. I think it's got a longer lead than the last one. Well, you know what I mean, because that could be now. Like, like, I'm just going to feed this through there to you, and then you've got and you, you pull it through. So it'd be everything would be done quicker. And I think that's. I think if people were to like vloggers. Were to doing this kind of thing, you know, like what we're doing here, were to actually be honest, they would say that their workload has increased, not double, but triple, maybe quadruple, because of uh, all the different angles and the fact that your uh, work partner is yes. now a cameraman. Now, what you do is you take your plug and you thread it through the hole that you've already made. I can't see anything because of the bloody sun. Uh, there we go. Now if you had a partner working with you on the other side, they'd now be threading this through. Instead? Instead, they're holding a camera. Uh, uh. I thought I came out of all the tools that I need, but this is one of those ones that needs taking apart. Edit. Bye. <laughs> I'll wait here. There we go. She will be happy because this is where she sleeps underneath this particular lamp. It hasn't been there for the last week or so. Job done, on to the next. The sheep haven't been eating their hay that we carted all the way down here for them. And it's because they don't like the bags that I've put the hay in for them to eat it from. 
they don't like the smell of the bags. They have rather sensitive snouts and they don't, if they don't like the smell of something, they just won't eat it. So we were discussing having to drive all the way into town just to get Haney or have one ordered which may or may not arrive. So I just thought, you know, I've got, I've got all that leftover yarn. I'm just going to make one. It's quite fun actually. Do you know that the owl is a symbol of good luck for antiques? Mm -hmm. Do you know this? Every antique dealer should have an owl, apparently. Says. Antiques dealers. She's coming. What's this, Bree? Just pull it off of there. <laughs> Here. Yay! Right, Brie, I'll tie this up. Somewhere, somehow. Crowdy. Nets making and mending traditionally became the task of a fisherman's wife and children. Their contribution to the sustenance of the household as the head of the family provided for them out at sea. Much fishing was done at night and there is folklore that wives would carry their husbands on their backs out to their boats in order that they needn't have wet clothes the night long. Nets were woven from flax or hemp, weighted with rocks along the bottom and floats of varying kinds along the top. Groups of men would row out onto the water in two boats, setting out a long drift net between them and it was customary to recite a prayer and a psalm to bless their endeavours before they settled to eat a meal their women had packed for them and talk of the days of old and the days to come. A long night would be had at home too and menfolk would often be greeted homeward as they rode by the sight of their wives anxiously watching for them from the shore, facing seaward from the heather. A family unit structured this way brought security to the whole society the wife supporting and trusting her husband to sustain the household as the man trusted his maker to provide. Each home working in unison with its neighbour acted like the knots of a great net, its yield being one of fellowship and a connection not only to one another, but to our whole heritage and ancestry. In today's society we have forgotten who we are and where we come from, but if we become fishers of men, we can mend these broken cords of brotherhood and how bountiful our catch could be. What are you doing? Demolition. Did you get fed up hitting your head on it? 
you would have seen in other episodes, I'm sure you would have caught this according to this. There's an archway here. Well, this this archway. But Kate and I are both six foot tall. And this archway came to about what, five foot? Yeah. And about 20 minutes ago, I hit my head on it for the very last time. And uh, that's the result. Well, we're not going to be hitting our head on that anymore. No. Um, interesting to see what's underneath here as well. Well, the original ceiling's under there, the same that's in there. And look, what I also found, if we need any... Oh, cool. This is the original pine. This was across here. Because if you, if you see, this, this is the original patterns from the uh, late 60s, early 70s. This is going to be a, a second bedroom or an office or something eventually. It's just storage space at the minute. And well, it, well there's every another spare, board. Every spare bit of room there's we've got. There's another Victorian board there. Yeah, there's, there's, I think there's three or four all together. It's four, five. Well, oh, but seriously, you, you've got no idea how. But I, I can't believe that I didn't crack my head open. I hit it that hard. Well, that's the solution. Now, this is the west of the island, isn't it? We've never been over this side, have we? This is the very first time we've been here. This is the south of the island. No, where the sun's setting. Sun will move round. Slowly, but yeah. And then the, it's over the, there. That's the south, that's the west. You're, go, you're going first. Well, if I'm going first and you're filming. Well, I'll, I'll need your hand because yet again you're taking me across a bog. I think you were protesting a little bit too much. Really? Yes, I would like you to go first. Would you like me to walk across it first? Yes, to see if you can sink into the swamp or not. Well, hang on, because I want an action shot, because if you, if you sink in... I want your hand. Oh. Where did you step? Yeah, here. It's all solid round there, because it's... Uh, it's frozen. There's another bit of wood for cutting. I did say on an earlier episode how you're not exactly one for... I don't... I don't have the footwear on for walking through mud like that. What, do I? Well, you yes, never I do. Yes, I do, really, yeah. I've seen you in a pair of wellies once in my life. I don't wear wellies. Hang on. I just want to take it in. I quite like the, uh, the landscape. It's got a very old, ancient vibe about it. Where are you going? Yeah. I want to go this way. Katie, this is an old trackway, isn't it? Yeah. There's, uh, there's actual paving stones underfoot at some, some spots. A little bridge. So there's no reason why this shouldn't go all the way over to the other side of the island. It seems to stop here. Um, uh, this is a winter spot. So you, you wouldn't... Uh, It'd be a nice forested glade in the summer, but you wouldn't get the view at all. Yeah. 
Oh wow. That looks spectacular. You're not going to be able to see that watching this on the screen. But that bit of coastline down there, it's all frozen still. That's going to look amazing. Another deer wallow. Frozen up now, but. And if I'm not mistaken, on the other side of that tree, there's a path down there to the water. So we'll see if we can get down there. We can get down there. This is what happens to our post. This tarp was left here with the instructions that the courier put the mortar under the tarp, which obviously is too difficult to understand. So what you just saw there was us going up to the mainland to collect our post, which we do as often as we can, because, well, you'll see why. We have like a, a metal container that most of the post goes into, and our Royal Mail deliveries are spot on. Cannot fault Royal Mail or the post office. Uh, in my business capacity, I've been using them for, oh God, about 25 years now and never had any issues with the post office or Royal Mail, but every other courier. So, well, anyway, before I go waffling on, have a look at this. And this is how we get our post. Obviously I've turned it around, so you can't see the addresses. But, I mean, let's look at the state of this.
Words obviously fail me. But we get paid £88 a month by the post office for this inconvenience. Uh, if I'm perfectly honest with you, I'd much rather get my post in one piece. Making that hay net has caused me to sort of reflect on the history of net making. And I remembered that I have this. Scott dug it out of one of our boxes for me that are still all packed up in storage. When I found this on a river, uh, a river bank in the south of Scotland, I can't remember what river it was, um, I knew straight away instinctively that it was um, something, it wasn't just a rock. Obviously water can erode holes in rock, but if that were the case then this cavity would be smooth. It reminded me straight away of a prehistoric loom weight I'd seen used at the Cranog Centre in Perthshire, but it wasn't until I turned it over that I was sure then that this has been made by human hands. Someone in prehistory bashing another rock against it to make this hole in it deliberately. But it's not a loom weight, it's a fishing net weight. Cool thing to find. What are you doing? I'm out getting some fodder for the sheep. And it's, uh, it's become a bit exasperating because there's nothing to get them. There's nothing that we can reach. They'll eat pine and they'll eat cedar. I think you can reach that over there. Well, so. I don't know. I, you see, what, you, what you're saying is take off the end pieces, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I, want a, I want a full branch. Visitor. Say again? I've got a visitor. Where? She's come to see what you're doing. Bree. <laughs> she, she knows what I'm doing. She'll have heard me chopping the uh, the branches. As soon as I pick this axe up, she knows what's happening. A hatchet, should I say. The trouble is, Brie, you're going to have to come back over there to eat it. Come on. Let's go. Come on then. I want light. Okay. What was that all about? Yum yum. It smells lovely. Well, we most definitely had our coldest night last night. So for us, the coldest night of the year so far. <laughs>